All right, Cooter here. I'm uh, doing this by myself, so you're not going to get to look at my pretty little face, but here we go. Um, got my buddy Dwayne's Jeep up on the lift. Uh, this is an 06 LJ, Rubicon LJ. And when we were wheeling the other day, some really bad noises came out of this rear Dana 44. And I'm not gonna get too in depth on trying to show you this on camera right yet because I'm pulling a carrier out to knock the ring gear off of it and have a look at the diff. Uh, what I wanted to point out though right now is that I'm getting ready to pull the axles out. So I've got a slide hammer on here with a flange adapter. Uh, there's four 3 8 24 fine thread nuts that hold the retaining plate in there to the end of the axle. Uh, wheel bearings on these are pressed onto the axle with a retaining plate, as opposed to a C-clip inside the diff. They're out here, much better set up. Anyway, I do not have a video assistant today, so I'm gonna pull these axles out and then I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll get this thing a little higher up on the lift and pull the carrier out of that and see how bad the damage really is. Uh, right now you can turn the drive shaft, the ring gear turns, the axles do not. I suspect the factory track lock air locker in there uh, has a whole bunch of blown up spider gears. I know there's a few teeth missing on the ring and pinion, but uh, give me a few minutes, we'll get back at that and uh, take it from there. I did find the camera assistant, so I wanted to show you how easy these axles come out. I know some guys put the rotor on there and use it as a slide hammer. If you have the actual tool, it makes it pretty simple. There you go, axles out. Uh, so like I said before, retaining plate, oil seal, wheel bearing, and I call it the wedding ring. This is what locks the wheel bearing onto the shaft. All gets this and this get pressed on, this free floats. This is the retainer that goes over those four little studs in there. And now you can see the, the brake anchor plate is loose. We're not even gonna take that off. And uh, now we can pull the carrier out. All right, I wanted to point out a couple of things here before I pull the carrier out. Um, this is a factory track lock air locking differential. So what you'll see here is an air hose running down to this nipple on the locking cylinder. Uh, I don't know, it's probably millimeters. It looks like it's less than or similar to quarter inch. I guess these systems only run at about five PSI. So what I did was there's a little, uh, little uh, spring-loaded clip on there to cold, kind of keep it tight. Pop that off, slid this right off. One thing you need to notice is these Anytime you take a carry out, the bearing caps are matched to the housing side specific and orientation specific. So this one is already marked. And I don't know if it's going to show up well on camera, uh, but there is a mark right here and there is a matching mark right here. So that one we know. This one here can only go one way because if you'll notice, there's a cutout in the cap and I'll get you a better shot of that once I pull the cap off for the air fitting. So all of you that have ever put in an air locker and were worried about grinding part of the cap out to clear the airline, the factory did it. All right, more when I get it apart. All right, carrier's out. Um, there is quite the pile of scrap metal in the bottom of this diff. Notice the pinion gear, all the teeth are intact. 
I don't have enough hands to rotate it and show you, but trust me, I just turned it. They're all there. However, one of those is missing. Now that alone would not account for the issue. That tooth is probably what's ground up in the bottom of the diff. Uh, I'm gonna get the rest of this apart, try to split this uh, carrier and see what's going on inside it. Okay, ring gear bolts are out. I think there's 10 of them. Brass punch. We don't want to damage the broken ring gear. Hammer. Uh, one thing to note, when I pulled the carrier out, the two side shims came out. Uh, they are on, on this particular axle, they sit outside of the carrier bearings. Yes, normally I would mark these left and right. All right, so my first time taking one of these apart. Uh, I took this cover plate off the back side. It's, it's in the bottom of here. And all of these little gears come out. And obviously you can see that's not the way that's supposed to be. So this has something to do with the air locker. One set of these moves up. I think what happens is it moves up and it binds on this other set. Um, there's eight of them in there, some long ones. Some short ones, they've all got teeth missing. So what I'm gonna do next, I wanna see the rest of the inside of this. I'm gonna cut this air fitting off. The bearing puller, normally this goes on, one goes on each half of the bearing and you would put a race on there and the other piece sits on top and it pushes down and pulls up. Pushes down, pulls up. However, this air fitting is in the way. I'm just going to cut it off because this locker's shut. I just want to take it apart and show all of you what's inside it. So we'll get back to you. Okay, so here's the setup. I just clipped off that little air fitting. It went flying. It's over there on the bench somewhere. Uh, puller, 36 millimeter socket, impact gun. Bear with me for Apologize for the noise. Rick, please edit out the noise. Replace that with some kind of uh, mechanical music. Anyway. That was a tight one. The other one came off much easier. Removing the tools. Getting rid of all that stuff because the bearings are off. We'll put this away. This tool's worth its weight in gold. However, the OEMs keep screwing things up and making things way more complicated and difficult to take apart. So the tools need to probably adapt to it. All right, so as you can see, now I can lift this collar right off. And the rest of this I'll get apart. There's some screws under here, which will then let me separate the case and see what's going on inside. Go over here. Again, I've never taken one of these apart. I'm not even sure this is the correct way to do it, but at this point, this thing is scrap metal. There it goes. I don't want to say this is tin because it's a little heavier than tin, but this comes out behind it. This has got to be an air piston because that's where the air fitting, I hope I'm getting this on video, that's where the air fitting went in. This must be the air piston that would extend out when you apply pressure to it. And this would just be a bearing surface that it would push on. And here are the four locking tabs that will move some pieces inside here, probably to engage these uh, side gears over here and lock this thing up. So I'm not gonna bore you with the details. Let me clean this up. Let me pull these uh, eight bolts out. We'll split the case apart and see how many more pieces, broken pieces come out. All right, okay. Okay, here we go, real time. Torx bolts are all out. I put a Torx bit on the impact gun, lifting them out. 
And I'm pulling this apart. You're seeing it just like me for the first time. Looks like a, uh, this is the clutch and some dogs. All right, we got a side gear here that fits the axles. And by the way, the splines on the axles, in case anybody's wondering, were not twisted at all. Here's the two axles. And you can tell because look how smooth that slides on and off of there. Okay, these are both 30 spline shafts. However, I don't know how deep we can go in this thing. There we go. I guess that kind of tells the tale. So, a little odd. I'm still not 100% uh, sure I figured out how this diff works. But I can tell you right now, it doesn't. So, this is all scrap metal. Uh, I'm not even going to go any further with this. It's going in the scrap metal bucket. I don't really care much more about how it works. It's no good. It's nothing we can do with it. It's gonna get all tossed away. And that's it. So Dwayne's gonna get a new e-locker. I'll show you later how the pass-through connection works on the housing and what that might look like. And we'll get this all cleaned out. And uh, we'll see what we can do with it, okay?